Hi guys and welcome to The Big Shift with me, Stephen Gillen. We're gonna deep dive and give you the most raw entertainment and content. The latest current issues and transformational stories in business, entrepreneurship, crime and entertainment. The Big Shift where everything is possible. Welcome to another episode of The Big Shift. And today I have a special guest, sporting legend, who went on to have phenomenal success also in business. It's Sir David Lloyd. So what do you think in, in the early years? I mean, you know, you went on to do unbelievable things, IPO and even more, you know, you know, we'll get into that. But, you know, at the start, when you was really trying to get there, you know, and get a foothold and try and learn, what do you think was your best, your most strengthening characteristic to help you to really solve these problems? I, I think my, my, my background in tennis, being a hard working tennis player, not a not what I call a racket talented player like a McEnroe, I had to work doubly hard to, to achieve what I did at tennis. So that background of never giving in and learning all those lessons to not give in, then you build up a resistance to all these people. You know, when, when I first had the idea, my friend said, what are you talking about, David? You, this is ridiculous. And, and I fell out with some old friend you know but nothing dissuaded me because i knew it would work and that's what you got to have you got that unbelief and you've got to believe in yourself and never be put off as long as you've done your homework don't be put off and then you learn these lessons and you learn your lessons from you know laurie barrett and we nearly went into business with barrett's homes all those years ago and he taught me one thing about land he just said Three things he said. I said, what are they? He said, location, location, location. And now you hear it all over the place. And he's absolutely right. You can put the greatest thing in the world. If it's in the wrong location, it isn't going to make money. It's as simple as that. And so those sort of lessons you learn along the way, I was a sponge. I asked everybody. You know, people say, I use a dictator. That's absolutely, I'm totally the opposite. I ask opinions all the time. I don't always go with them. Absolutely. I, I ask them because ask they're better questions. than me. Yeah. You know? You know, in the end of the day, Ronald Reagan was one of the greatest presidents of the United States. And because he wasn't the brightest guy, but what he did, he appointed the best guys. And that's what he yeah. did. And that's what you have to do. You can't do a business without people. You, they've got to believe in your dream. These people have got to believe in your dream. And you've got to make them part of that dream. You've got to give them share options. You've got to, it's got to be a team effort and they've got to be part of it. Not, you know, when we sold to Whitbread, my company that, I knew everybody. I knew the members. I knew everybody. Suddenly, all my staff became a number. And you know what? I just can't see that's the right way. This is tough. I read that. You know, that was that was the first thing. When, you know, you went IPO, right? And it was and it was two hundred million. I think. You know, I read yeah. down. I mean, it may be more or less whatever, David. You know, what they what they printed, right? You know, about the figures. But you know, and that was that was the first thing. You know, and then you went on. You rebranded, you know, didn't you? What happened was we were we were taken over by Whitbread. You're right for two hundred and one million, and I thought we we I thought together. And I told I told the chief executive, you know, your 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 skill of running a massive three billion pound company with your disciplines, and my way of running a company with entrepreneurial skills and very very strict. Uh, financial controls, but allowing the people in the business to feel they're part of the business. If you can mold those two together, we're both going to gain. And they looked at me, you know what? And they said to me, we can't do that. I said, why can't you do that? Because they said, well, if you get run over by a bus, what have we got? I said, actually, if you, if I am run over by a bus, my company would survive better than yours because if you come and look at all what we do is, we are actually making the people in the business responsible. Mm. They make their own decisions under strict guidelines. You don't do that. You're a pyramid. And it's a pyramid, another flat, yeah. You no, know, I believe in flat management. And yeah, flat, flat, absolutely. I, I Same here. The information, yeah. you know, tearing, coming, oh, coming down, do, David. 
Oh, and making oh, people, making people part of, of what, of what, of where everyone's doing. So we're all inspired to go the same way and fight and, for and it. And you know, if you do it the pyramid way, what happens is the guy at the top shields himself from ever making a mistake because he blames the guy underneath him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And they just keep getting new jobs. So I'm thinking, hold on, so <laughs> just made a mess of that, and he's got another, job. he's got another share. I'm thinking, wow, this can't be right. And it, so that's that's you know that's the way you and it. it after a year with Whitbread, uh, they wouldn't change. And I thought, I, I can't do this anymore. So I left. And I had a non-compete for a year. So when I left, I said to my, my, my then, well, my oldest son from my first marriage, I said, are they making such a mess of it? I can't, you know, you're going to, you could be, a, he could, could have been a pro golfer. I said, it's up to you. I don't care. I can't do anything for a year and I won't help you and I won't give you money. But these are five people you can call. And I think if you call them and you explain what you want to do and you can tell them that I will be joining you in a year's time when I'm free to do so, I think you might be able to raise some money. And that's what he did. He raised 25 million from these guys and Next Generation was formed. We still Next have an generation. argument, yeah. we still have an argument yeah. today who's found the name. I found the name. He says he found the name. Anyway, actually, the name was found. It, 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 the name came about from Denver Airport because we used to go skiing and that's where you used to land. And I went past, always when we landed every year past us there, there was a shop called Next Generation. And that name stuck. And that's why I think it was called Next Generation. And so he ran the business. I went to Australia because I wasn't allowed to do it here uh, in Britain. And I did it in Australia in the same, and that's what happened. And so Next Generation was born. It was so successful compared with the David Lloyd ledger that we left, we actually bought it. And that's now it's all David Lloyd. With the IPO, you know, the IPO thing going through that. I mean, everyone would say, obviously, that's a top business level. You know, uh, when you get there, we work with a lot of companies and we, you know, we brand them and do a lot of the design and PR and marketing. So they're super clever and they come to us because, you know, of course, they're trying to get up there where you've been. And one of the things that I've learned is it's all treacherous. It can go wrong at any time, really, especially at that point, you know, yep. some of these companies, they may be 900K in, David, but they're trying to get that last bit. Yep. You know, they need to get that right. And it can really flop even at that point. You get lucky, but you make your luck. I was very lucky with the IPO that I met a guy called David Cohen. Yeah. Then Smith, Simon and Coates, then he went on to Fleming's. And David and I hit it off straight away. And he was, he, I learned more from him with the way the city works and what you have to do and how you run the company than anybody. And I still, we still keep in touch. And you got, you know, I got lucky to meet someone that really loved the business and really wanted to help. And I, you know, I was a sponge. And so I learned from him and he loved some of the things we did that no other listed company did. And it was a, it, it was a great coming together of two, of two people who had a lot of respect and he guided us through the IPO and set the price and uh he was good and as i say we still turn stay in touch so without him you know we would have met maybe someone who was only in it for the money and he just wanted his fee you know and then they rip you off you know flemings did a great job yes of course they got paid fees but they loved it it was and 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 the reason why they loved it it was you know it was such a incredible concept you know it, I used to do speeches and then the guy coming in after me, he ran a company selling bolts and, and, and nails. So, I mean, it's hard to talk exciting about that, but I can talk about the club and the members and McEnroe popped in for a cup of coffee. So it's a, you know, it's an exciting flotation. Yeah. I mean, it really was, it was, you know, for a company we listed all those years ago, and we, it was 70 million pounds, the valuation. And, but we had Prudential, we had Mercury, we had uh, Prudent, we, we had companies, Sun Life, who they normally wouldn't touch a company of that size. Yeah. It would, you know, would have to be 50 million minimum themselves. They came in because of the PR of a company they knew was going to go somewhere, plus the fact that it was alive, it was living. It wasn't... Yeah a nuts and bolts company that no one understood. So we, yeah. were, we were oversubscribed seven times. It floated at the right, he did a great job. You know, when you IPO, the skill is from, and it was David Cohen's skill, is to, on the day of listing, 
mm. to, to reach a premium of about 10 to 12 percent because if you if it's more you've given your company away and if it's less in other words below listing price they have to back it up and yeah, that's always a bad thing you never catch up so yeah. and he listed it i went down i was watching the screen go oh, david lloyd leisure live because in the old days and it was ticker tapes and stuff it wasn't all this press a button job yeah uh, uh, and and it, it, he got his twelve percent premium. It was spot on. You know, there's a lot of specialist work there when these people. Oh yeah, I mean, amazing. Stage, yeah. It's it's a it's quite a unique unique specialism at that point. Um, one of the things, and I certainly know this to be true, is what's really important on your journey is is the people around you. Absolutely. Not, not just people. I've certainly learned this the hard way time and time again as well yeah. not just people who are in it for the money really you don't want the people who's in it for the money no. yes you want them to have the money and the skills but you want them to have the right character where they're good heart heart-centered people but they really see it they yeah. see it you know and they'll stand and fall with you you know Absolutely. this is what you know it's just as easy as that this is what i learned when we floated we had four pages of a4 people in the company who had share options going down to the cleaner in the kitchen. Wow, that, that's great, you know, really. That's wonderful. I, when we floated, I'm not, not exaggerating, when I float, I would sometimes get a call, a guy, maybe the, the bar manager at Heston or whatever, hey, David, what's happened today? The share price went down 5p because I had shares. <laughs> that's and, and great. That, that's it, great. So, so we created something very special, and, and, and I, which I don't didn't know this, by the way, but our life as a company is actually a university degree no yeah i see it i really it, do it, it, it's it fascinating actually, two people have done that one was bristol which my my son was giving it this guy yeah. and the other one was it was a chap who went to another uni london university it, it's the it's the perfect model you know startup business uh, uh, bring in new investors the, the first one goes out the second one comes in the ipo and then the trade sale up there so it, we ticked all the boxes but that's by pure chance and by having the right people are around you giving you the advice and and, and as you go through and, and yeah. giving the people something they really feel is theirs oh do you know it's such a it's such a wonderful story because you know this is my learning david even now i mean i i you know i'm all in on i you know i come with the right energy which i've always found is absolutely key as we go out into uh, creation to to build because doors open in this in this strange way when you're coming with the right yeah the right energies and the right heart you know you can be as strong as you like and as tough as you like as long as you have the end in mind and it's a good ending it's yeah. it's it, you know it's not a selfish ending it's it's a creative ending as well obviously that's a wonderful lesson as well for people is i mean i've always seen as well you know and you've just highlighted it there um many times that really strong really successful companies are built by people by the right people you yeah. know and getting them people involved really involved you know in the you know, right you, ways you, and i believe the flat management with a box that they're in charge of and they make their own decisions they have their own you know because otherwise you do get this pyramid and i don't think pyramids work i mean i you know i, I i've seen them and you know, when, when Whitbread took us over, they said, oh, you know, we're happy with a 9% internal rate of return. I said, I wouldn't get out of bed for 20. So, so you know, what are, we, what are you doing? I mean, yeah, oh, yes, but I said, no, it doesn't work like that. You, you don't have to have that that pyramid mentality, you know, where whereby they used to have an executive uh, meeting uh, every week where at least 30 people sat around the table. And I said, what are you guys doing? You're all taking a day out. I mean, it's mind blowing. And and it's just a complete waste of time. And t you can't buy time. The great poem, fill, fill 60 seconds worth of distance run. Every second counts. David, you know? honestly, it's so good to hear you speak because looks good, doesn't it? You know, all these people around that, oh. you know, but uh, what actually is being done here? And you know what? Honest to God, I always say one of my things is, time is the greatest commodity we have when i learned that my life my whole life pivoted because i suddenly realized how precious it was even in my quality time the people i would let into my circle who i would spend time with was just so important it all changed for me david the background we come from i think shapes us as well to yeah. be 
very grounded, you know, towards, you know, mm. towards things. Uh, so, so we, you know, we've been, you know, and people say to me, oh yeah, so now we're now in America now and, and, you know, we've come here to start a new life. I've got a younger son and a lovely, lovely wife and, and he's gone to school here. And the reason we, we were allowed to get here was because of him, because he got a scholarship to a school that is a special school and that got us he got the visa and we're in we're in on the back of his visa so because because you couldn't get there because of covid anyway so we're here uh we're starting a new business here we're doing clubs here in in florida which are air conditioned we've got the sites uh we're also doing an adventure world which is absolutely spectacular whereby you do rides you know you do zip lines you do everything under one i'm a great believer in in if you're going to do leisure it's got to be indoor and outdoor because it doesn't matter where you are in britain it's because it gets cold and wet in the winter where in florida it gets too hot in the summer so you need air con so so you balance it and if it's indoor and outdoor you're not dependent upon the seasons to your income when we first opened heston i charged for indoor tennis and i used to pray for rain because if it didn't rain they wouldn't come indoors because it was 10 quid and I thought, I can't be dependent upon the weather. I've, you know, Borg became one of the greatest players of all time because he took the biggest obstacle out of play. He took the net out of play. He invented a spin that he could hit the ball two metres above the net and it used to bounce so high. So the biggest thing in tennis is your net. If you didn't your net, you've lost the point. So he took that obstacle out. So we took the weather out. It's very logical. So if you take the weather weather out of your equation, you, you you're not dependent on looking at oh my god, what's the weather going to do today? In fact, you make the weather work for you. For example, in Britain, all the clubs are geared, maybe not now, but they were to look at the long range forecast for the weekend. And if it looked like it was going to be sunny, all the barbecues, all the ice cream, everything came into the club, so you milked it at weekends. So you've yeah. got to be in front of the game, and and Absolutely. so the indoor and outdoor way is without doubt the best way and it's more expensive because you've got to find more land and it costs more to build but you know, that's why David Lloyd Leisure to this day is still around we started in 1982 and it's still expanding because it's indoor and outdoor throughout a really exceptional amazing life really honestly um of all the things you've done you're unbelievably hard-working and grounded I get that you know and um you've navigated your way to phenomenal success in everything you've pretty much done right that's very very fair to say through all of that david what do you think has been your hardest kind of adversity to to overcome just one thing maybe something that kept coming back or something that was hard for you Hull, 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 Hull was very oh. hard. <laughs> Hull, was very, very, talk. Very, Hull was very hard, and it was it was uh, it taught me a lesson where there are places, and there are still places in Britain that have tribal <laughs> sorts of actions. Uh, one Celtic and Rangers, one yeah. Man United Manchester City. Yeah, in Hull, it was Hull football against Hull rugby. And my whole thesis of buying Hull was a property play, but to give something back to Hull, which was the new stadium. And I had all the land and I had the council on board. What I didn't work out was the fact that by offering these people of Hull the chance to play in a new, brand new stadium, so it's going to be rugby and football, brand new, lots of shops around it, everything there, and the money that I made from selling the first the two sites I owned, because I owned the rugby and I owned the football, that money had to go back into the new development. I couldn't take it out. That was a legal agreement. In the, I only made it down the line, way down the line. And it was a, it was a war. I mean, my car used to get my car used to get scratched. It, it, I came up. I had I had I had proper God death threats. I had proper death threats. <laughs> No cut way. Out, cut out with late. I mean, like you see in the film. <laughs> I didn't realize they existed, but I got yeah. it. And I thought, oh. wow, I'm, I, I got to get out of here. So that's why I, I, I got out. And yeah. then I, rent, I rented the stadium, and the guy didn't pay the rent. So I closed the door so he couldn't play the match. So I, I'm hated there. But, you know, all I was trying to do was to, to give them some, something new. 
uh, and something better. And what happened was my dream actually happened and it happened because Hull was the only city in England and Britain actually that had its own telecommunications, Kingston Communications. And they sold it, they went public for four billion. That's Hull, Hull. Kingston Communications was owned by Hull Council. And so suddenly the council got four billion. So they built the stadium. So that new stadium, exactly on the land that I had, so the dream is there, and I created that, but I left. So now I'm, you know, when I see how I'm, I'm, I'm pleased they got a new stadium, and they did manage to get the tribal bit out of the way. They maybe got it out of the way because it was done by the council and not by some southerner. So, so that was probably why. But you know, it was sad because it was an incredible plan and a very ambitious plan, and it was all the pieces were there, but these people wouldn't allow it to happen. So I left. What is next then for David Lloyd? We're here now full time in, in America. Uh, I've got to come back and get my working visa. I formed a company with, with an ex-tennis player called Johan Creek, who won the Australian Open. Uh, and we've got the sites. The first plan is to do a, a sort of a David Lloyd, it's not going to be called David Lloyd, a David Lloyd type club with all the indoor facilities, the swimming pools, etc., etc. And the other one is this adrenaline world, which is high action, you do it. Roller gliders, uh, zip lines, uh, bungee jumping, trampolines. So we've got the finance virtually in place. Uh, we've got the land. So this time next year, if you give me a call, you might we might do the Zoom call on, on a roller glider. You can see us flying around the building. So that's what we're doing. I look forward to that, David, really. And let me say, look, Thank you very much for coming on The Big Shift and discussing an extraordinary, amazing life and the highs and lows of an exceptional journey. So, David Lloyd, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for listening in on another gripping edition of The Big Shift with me, Stephen Gillen. We really look to inspire and really help and support our audiences in business and entrepreneurship out there. Stay tuned for much more great content and many other benefits. Have a look in the bio below. Follow me there, guys, for a lot more other great things that will be coming to support you on your wonderful journey.